Okay, hi. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Quilt Nerd. Um, I'm your host, Mary Fonz. And on today's show, you will learn... Okay, anybody? Anybody? Anybody catch that reference? Love of quilting? PBS? I said it a lot. Hi. Let's see, how did it start? <laughs> Something about, you know, you're watching series 2600 on... Blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Live from London. It's Saturday night. Uh, and um, it's 10 o'clock p.m. And it's time for... Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, the quilt behind me? Mm, yeah. yeah. You're going to learn all about it. You're going to learn all about this quilt. You're going to learn about this quilt and so many more things. We're going to talk about... Oh, my God. I'm so excited for the show. Oh, I'm so excited for the show. Have I been more excited for a show? I don't know. I don't know what I have to share with you is going to like blow your mind. You know, it's going, I mean, if you've never watched this show before, um, it's very simple. We just nerd out about quilts because, because, because um, quilts are a whole lot more than just pretty blankets. If they were just pretty blankets, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't. Got into making quilts, super loved it, had a gig <laughs> on TV, teaching quilting on TV, and that was fine and it was great, but, you know, it, it wasn't until I really, like, was like, oh, quilts are about history and philosophy and art and, his well, history, I said that, uh, fashion and pop culture. Um, they're about so many things. They're about everything I want to learn about, um, but it's hard to just learn about everything. So if you learn about quilts, you sort of go, you sort of end up learning about everything. So, you know, if you're a quilt person, you're in the right place. If you're a nerd, you're in the right place. I was talking to Eric today and I said, um, what are things, what are other things people are really nerdy about? I mean, we can all, you know, Star Wars, the Marvel Universe, Harry Potter, um, you know, certain video games and things, right? Um, and I, I just think all nerds are alike. We all like our stuff, man. And if you think the Marvel Universe is textured and there are little Easter eggs everywhere, I mean, forget it. Quilts? Come on. And we have people who are nerds in other realms who have uh, decided that this show is something they can't miss. And so Tuesdays and Thursdays at uh, uh, 11 a.m. Central uh, and Saturdays at 4 p.m. Central, we just nerd out. And I have a little bit of, uh, I, well, I prepare. Oh no, okay, oh good. Yeah, I gotta keep it tight, right? Gotta keep it tight. Um, oh, nice, okay, yeah. So I talk a little bit and then I look at the chat and then the show just takes off from there. But sometimes I do this little part l later in the show because I just need time to like get into the groove, but I don't know, I feel pretty groovy tonight. I just kind of like, I could, I could chit chat with you about my day. I could tell you I got a basket on my bike. I could, t I could do those things, but I just, I'm feeling the spirit. <sighs> we called this quilt church for a minute, but let's not bring God into this. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is a, uh, this is nerdery, but, uh, yeah, we have a few people who watch this show who are, um, who are nerds from other places and they just, they dig it. They dig the history. They dig the prettiness, the prettiness, the scandals. Mm -hmm. Uh, tonight we're going to look at something that I mean, was it a total disaster? Was it brilliant? I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, hold on to your butts. Because <laughs> it's really something, in it's really interesting. There was some art and some quilts and some stuff that happened in like 1977 to like 1983. That's just, it's just crazy. I guess I'll put it this way. How would you answer the question, are quilts art? Are they art? Or are they craft? Or are they decorative art? Or are they... I don't know, sublime. Are they just blankets? Or, you know, like when I say quilts lead to everything, this is a question about what art is, right? I'm, I am interested in what art is. I went to a gallery today, okay? I saw some art and it's like, we can talk about that and we can use quilts as a way to get there, you know? So, yeah. So now we have to see who's in the chat. Who's in the chat? Uh, you can lurk here. That's totally cool. Um, but j and if you want to be in the chat, I hope you I hope you will. Uh, one thing, I'm kind of working on it. If it's hard for you to get to chatting, I have two factor authentication set up. Um, and I'm still. I think anyway. My, I'm new at this, right? M many people who are here 
including myself, are new to Twitch by like three months, right? Like I just figured out the alerts and stuff, you know, and the green screen is like, this is my second show with a green screen, okay? So um, just, just be patient. I know Twitch is like new for a lot of people who are here. Uh, it's a great platform. We're all learning it together. I mean, really three months ago, three months ago. And we were, you know, like, what happens here? And now look, we're, you know, <laughs> So, uh, so it's all happening, but the two factor authentication thing, when you have to do your phone number and like get a notification code and stuff, it doesn't just protect you. It protects the show from trolls and just like annoying people who, you know, they disrupt the flow, man. We can't have that. Um, so yeah, so that's what that's about. I just, you know, it is what it is. Eric's least favorite phrase in the English language. It is what it is, but it is what it is. I, I don't know. I can't use it uh, around here. So so now I'm going to say hello to everybody. Uh, you can lurk, like I said, but we would love to have you uh, chiming in. We have an amazing group of people here. The nerds, the force is strong with us. Um, okay, M. Sue John is here. Hello, Myra is here. Hello, S.J. Pepper, S.J. Pepper. I missed you. I missed you. Quilting politics. Sue. Sue is here. Hello to everyone. Robin's Nest. Robin's Nest uh, says, <laughs> um, hi everyone. So glad I could make it today. Life has been so busy lately. Tell me about it. There are live streamers that I watch. Uh, I can, I like always miss the lives. I just always do. It's just never, it's just never convenient. So life happens, man. I'm so glad you're here though, Robin. Really good to have you. Um, <laughs> Susan R. Michael. I mean, the gang is all here, including Carol Hempel. Um, she knows. She knows. Uh, okay, how dare life get in the way of quilting? I know, I know. Oh, and by the way, tomorrow, I'll say this a few times. Tomorrow is Sunday, and sometimes we do a sew together. I call it Sunday Social. Uh, and the nerds, whoever wants to get together and just sew, uh, like, I'll go live. <laughs> I forgot that part. Um, tomorrow is a Sunday social day. So I'm going to live stream tomorrow at 4 PM and it's a different kind of deal. I just get what I'm working on, what I'm sewing on. I'm working on my COVID quilt, trying to finish quilting it before the end of the year. I will do it. And so you can just tune in and work on your project. I play a little music, hopefully won't get copyright struck this time <laughs> or not struck, just, you know, copyright claim or whatever. Um, I thought I, I mean, come on, it was Chopin. It was Chopin. Um, so we sew, hang out, just whatever. It's cool. It's very chill. You can get some work done on your project. I definitely do when I live stream and sew because <laughs> sort of sort of trapped. No, it's in a good way, in a really good way. Um, okay, so that's at four o'clock central tomorrow. Same channel, all that. Bell of Seams. Bell of Seams was my very first, very first uh, audience member. <laughs> Cause I had a gig and I was like, I think I'm going to go on Twitch. And like the next day I did. And she was like, hi, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So everyone, uh, Amy's here. Hey, Amy, cool thing. Nancy, yo peeps, <laughs> yo peeps indeed, Nancy. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and it's dark and stormy in upstate New York. Love it. Cozy. Um, <laughs> Bip is here. Hello everyone. We're under a tornado warning in Rhode Island. Very unusual for you. Hmm. Well, you know, just keep the, you know, if your cell phone, I think all cell phones or smartphones do the thing now where, you know, you get an alert. It's terrifying, right? If you have like severe weather or something, it's like, beep, beep. so if you disappear, just come back uh, as quickly as possible. Okay. Um, warm and sunny in Reno. Reno's like that, man. Um, <laughs> we were all over the country and around the world. The nerds are from everywhere. We're everywhere just watch out. <laughs> um, M. Sue John, if you've intended to get on Discord, we have a Discord server uh, since Thursday and say what a great episode. Yeah. Thanks, Sue. I highly recommend it to anyone who didn't catch it live. You know what? It was, yeah. Oh yeah. The Veterans Day show. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good because we looked at wonderful quilts. I mean, we look every single time. I mean, sometimes my like flow is like on point. Sometimes I'm a little like, but the content is always good because it's, it's, it's quilt, you know? And so if I deliver it well, that's great. If I deliver it sort of weirdly, you know, 
whatever, but the, the stuff is really good, you know? And the show will go on forever because there's an endless amount of stuff to look at because quilts tell the story of the world and the world is very large and weird and hard, but anyway. Um, so, so yeah, you gotta get on the Discord. Yeah, okay, yeah, just contribute to the Discord. We'll talk about Discord again. Um, <laughs> Yvonne, hey Yvonne. Yvonne's here. I love Yvonne. Um, you need to address your fabric room, but not ready for the stress. You know what? Here's what you do, Yvonne. You, I mean, I think there's, there's like, this is like the 49th episode of this show. So one of these days, when there's like a hundred episodes and you've forgotten what was on the first, you know, the first 99, just turn it on in the background, have some fun quilt stuff going on. I, I don't have to listen to the show the whole time. Just play those replays. Remember your friends and the good times you had on Quilt Nerd and just, you know, just get her done. One, one piece at a time, right? Uh, crafts for others, thank you for subscribing. You subscribe for two months. You're on a two month streak. I really appreciate that. If you just subscribe, that is amazing. Helps me just feel encouraged, frankly. <laughs> and uh, and you don't have to watch ads and that's really great. Thank you so much. Uh, crafts for others is here. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Val, I believe. Um, NDH, NDH 661160. I'm so glad you're here, NDH. It doesn't say you're the first, ti first time uh, in the chat. So welcome back. Welcome back, I think, welcome back. Jill Alex, being at the live is so much better than work. Indeed it is, indeed. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, you only have an hour left to work. Listen, I'm just, you're not gonna get many calls. It's just gonna, you're gonna sail, sail right out of that. Um, let's see, the was organized. So Demented, So Demented is here, hello. And, Jill Alex, I said hello to Mama. Okay, okay. You need the quilt behind me. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Yvonne, I'm so glad you're here. Myra, no, my, Mom is not on today. I think Mom. I'm gonna bring Mom on maybe next week. The Marianne. Marianne, I just <laughs> the singularity, Marianne, because there's another Marianne in the in the chat, and I just saw her name, and I'm saying hello, but my mom's name is also Marianne, spelled the same way. Um, yeah, I'm into the green screen. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, this quilt behind me is awesome and we're going to talk about it. You know, that's what we do is like we start, I start every show content wise with a new quilt. Well, it's on the green screen now. It used to be just on my desktop, but now, <laughs> now it's a, it's really behind me. So you'll hear all about it. It's really cool. Um, and <laughs> yeah, mom, probably next week. Let's see, a crazy quilt, I know, I know, it's a great, Joyous Fibers, hello. Oh, nice, you've got Twitch on your TV, that is beautiful. I, you know what, there, there may come a day, I don't know, there may come a day when I can't say hi to everyone, every, you know, every single person, but like, I can now, and so I want to, so I just want to. So we're, we're getting there, we're getting there, but I gotta say hi to everybody. The new Elizabeth, yay. Um, I'm so glad you're here, M. Hicks is here. Um, and mm, Holmes, Holmes is here. Yo, Franz, Holmes, Holmes, my homie. Um, is that cringy? I don't know, but you are my Holmes. Uh, Pam Priest is here. Hello, new Elizabeth. Your home not caring for your elderly parents, and it's too cold to work in the garden. So happy to be here, and we are happy you're here. Excellent. Yeah, some cold weather. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Little Bird Stitches here. It's okay. It's okay. I just understood your name. It's so okay. Oh, it's so great. It's a very smart bunch of people. Just letting you know. Uh, if you enter this this world, we know one thing about you, you know. Uh, Padma's here. Excellent. Hello, Padma. Susan L is here. Excellent. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. It's okay. It's so funny. I just, I just got it. Uh, the Veterans Day. Okay, good. <laughs> Reconstructing. Yes, exactly, Marianne. I finally figured it out, right? Reconstruction. Uh, yay, nose to quilts, hi. Eric's chili was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing, yes. And it, I didn't make it, you know. He needs to be cooking more around here. He's quite good, but he, he, he needs to do some more of it, I think. And he did, so it was great. Um, so I, I did the intro first about why we're here. Um, there's just one other thing to say about that. And, okay, 
One other thing to say about the show is that I, I'm up in my research all day. I'm, I'm in the, down the rabbit hole of quilt history and culture and, and I just have loads of stuff. I have folders and I have files and I have stuff in the cloud and I have stuff on an external hard drive and all. And so I put things into buckets, right? And I, and I find links and I have lists of things. And so then I'm like, okay, what am I going to do for the show tonight? You know? And so I'll usually have a couple different like buckets to bring to you. But I don't, but I'm learning along with you. This isn't a lecture. It's not, um, it's not a presentation. It's, it's research, but it's live and it's a conversation and it's, and it's sort of focused, right? But it's not, you know, stuff happens where I have to click around and find something or I don't know. It's, it's not, it's not polished per, per se, but, um, but it's always, always a good time. So, um, and then I said last time we were going to talk about the group quilt and I didn't do it. So tonight it's happening. Okay. We must do not let me forget if I'm like, hi, it was a great show. Everyone say no, wait, because we're all going to make, we're going to make a quilt, a quilt nerd quilt. How many people will be involved? I don't know. We have to figure out a few, a few things. So let's do that tonight. Just size of the block, some kind of timeline. <laughs> it's maybe it's a bad idea maybe we like we should maybe we should sort of self-select a few people to just kind of put our heads together even if that's what we figure out that's good because I mean people want to get started and some people have already sketched things out and I'm very excited to do it and so but we have to get a few things sorted right and by the way by the way my mother suggested this <laughs> out of the blue two weeks ago in Budapest for heaven's sakes so I mean I am all about this project but I was not prepared <laughs> So, so it's not like I'm like, you know, I just, it, it just came at me like, like a, like a group quilt, you know, barely at me. Um, hey, Carice, Carice, it's good to see you. I'm so glad. Kion, Kionis, first time chat. Kionis, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the show. The people here are amazing and we have a really good time. Um, and I mean, it's just. It's just, I'm so glad you're here. You're not going to want to leave and you don't have to leave. You don't have, you just, you're going to, we're going to be here a while because I have a lot of stuff to share with you. Okay. So group quilt chat after, after the thing. So let's talk about what this is. I know Yvonne, I'm excited too. And if you haven't, if you don't know about the group quilt project, go back and watch. Uh, it was about, it was last week, I think it's in YouTube and it's on my Twitch channel. You can watch the replay of the pictorial quilt episode. If somebody knows what episode number it was, maybe throw that in the chat. Um, I mean, if nothing else, you don't have to participate in anything, but that show was really fun because we just looked at these amazing pictorial quilts, you know? We could do a whole month on pictorial quilts, but we don't need to. Okay, so now I gotta get small. Gotta get small. I'm in a really good mood, I don't know. Ah, I'm small. Okay, um, so this, keep leaving things on my desktop, like, like leaving socks around. Um, so this is a close up here of this wonderful quilt. So now I'm going to show you the full quilt to start us off tonight. And here it is. And here it is. Oh, do you see that? Do you see that quickness with the going full screen? I have a shortcut <laughs> three months into the show. I have a shortcut for that. Um, so this quilt, okay. And I'll be zooming in a little bit and, and showing you some more, some more good stuff. But this is, mm -hmm. where, oh, where, here, here, here. Okay. Yeah, it's wonderful. Let me, let me, let me zoom in, you know, now, right? Cause I want you to really see some more of this. We'll just kind of start at the top, right, and go down. Okay, ready for this? So this is a quilt owned by, um, <laughs> sorry, I just want to make sure I get the name of the, it's the Jewish Museum, the Jewish Museum in New York City. Of course, I wrote down, I mean, I have all this information and I didn't write down actually. Can someone please look up where the Jewish Museum is because I believe it's in 
New York, but I could be wrong. Uh, so many museums are in New York, you know? So, so this, this quilt, I found um, uh, this information about it and this wonderful picture of this quilt um, at the Jewish Museum website, and it was featured in an exhibition in 2014, okay? Um, okay, great, great, thank you. Uh, thanks, Dee Marie. Dee Marie, I didn't say hi to you. Hi. I mean, like, deeply from my soul, hi. Okay. So this is the curator, Claudia J. Nassen, talking about this quilt, okay? So it was, it was in a, a piece called Masterpieces and Curiosities. Uh, a Russian-American quilt is, is this exhibit here. Russian folk dancers and a balalaika player. Oh, I think he's up here, isn't he? Hang on. So I, I haven't read this. I haven't read about this quilt. I get to learn with you. Okay. Russian folk dancers and a balalaika player mingle with strutting roosters. Admiral Dewey and a Russian peasant guard, a uh, Russian peasant guard a pair of American flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look here. See him over here? Tennis rackets fan out. A hot air balloon takes flight and a circus acrobat performs a horse act while a rocking chair and a star of David appear side by side. A verit veritable potpourri of Russian, American, and Jewish motifs, this colorful quilt, the subject of the third iteration of the museum's Masterpieces and Curiosities exhibition series, cool, tells multiple stories. Originally owned by a Russian Jewish immigrant family, the quilt was assembled in America, incorporating panels probably embroidered in the old country. Its triangular pieces are aligned in a typical half square pattern, but their random colors create a visual effect similar to that of a crazy quilt. Totally, right? Several of you nerds were all, all about that. You're like, hey, it looks like a crazy quilt. NYC, yes. Thank you, Myra. Um, the cross-stitch technique in which some panels are embroidered was often used in late 19th century Jewish textiles from Eastern Europe. Interesting. While certain decorative motifs are identifiable as Russian. I mean, that's really interesting because like, hang on, the cross-stitch technique in which some panels are embroidered. Oh, here, look at that. Okay, like the rooster and the, the lady here, like the milkmaid. Or, or, you know, the woman, the woman, she looks like she has an apron on and she, she, she could milk a cow. I don't know. She can probably do lots of things, but look at that. Yeah. That's like a cross stitch or embroider, embroider stuff. That's really cool. Um, circuit, certain decorative motifs are identified as Russian. I mean, some of you may definitely be able to point this out, but like this guy, oh, I need to be, someone told me how to use jam boards. Who was it? Who was it? I can use, uh, I can use that. I, I've, I've got a way to like circle stuff on the screen and all that, but I forgot, forgot to set that up for tonight. Anyway, I'll just wave my cursor around, but these kinds of stars, right? They seem, they seem like, yeah, kind of sort of Russian. Like I think about like a, a Russian doll, you know, with like, I, you know, the, the, what are they called? The stacking dolls, right? Like these stars, feel familiar to me like they look they look familiar to me like from maybe one of those those dolls I know that I know the name some of you so someone will will get it um okay that these are pieced together so the decorative elements and the embroideries that these are pieced together with distinctly patriotic American images tells its own vivid story in the border the American flag uh 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 Sorry, I just, I'm trying to do two things at once, of course. Um, the American flag is combined with the Jewish star of David that's down here, right? No, no, no. That's the tennis racket there on the right. Do you see that? That's crazy. Sorry, I just want to find the flag. Um, hmm. References to pop popular American sports and pastimes suggest the enthusiasm of an immigrant for her or his adopted country. Dad. The quilt thus bears testimony to the acculturation of Russian Jews in the United States. A prominent figure in the, in the textile is George Dewey, the hero of the Spanish-American War, 
and a, later a candidate for president of the United States. This helps to date the work. Although 1898 is seen at the center, it could not have been completed before March 1899 when Dewey was promoted to admirable. Admiral. Ad, admiral. The admirable. Ad, ad, admiral. Oh my god. Admiral. The quilt is shown here with other works from the collection of the Jewish Museum that feature Russian motifs or reflect a conflagration of Russian and Jewish traditions, as well as with items of Americana that set the textile in context. America around 1900 is seen through the lens of an immigrant whose interests range from politics to sports to entertainment. This rich assemblage reward, rewards close observation. <laughs> Check. Hidden in its panels, you may find a charming couple holding hands, a number of eagles, flowers galore, a mysterious initial M or W, hmm, and other motifs waiting to be discovered. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, Robin. Thank you. Yeah. Matri Goshka. Um, cool, isn't it? Isn't it great? There's Admirable, Admiral Dewey. Why can't I? That's weird. I can't say that. Um, it's just fantastic, right? And when I found this, I was looking, oh, look at this little guy. Look at him down here in the corner. He's just hanging out down there. What's he up to? Um, it made me look, maybe I was looking for like Jewish quilts. I think maybe I was, but I was like, what's the tradition of like the Jewish American, you know, quilt tradition? Like, is there one? What's the deal with that? And yeah, there's some very, very interesting stuff to share with you at some point. So I already have like two more buckets that I'm filling, you know, with some really, really, really interesting content for you um, related to Jewish American quilts. Uh, I don't know anything about them, you know, and it's like, well, here's our opportunity, you know, and then, and then too, like, I don't know, I don't need to tell you people, I don't need to tell you people, but like this quilt takes us into the mind, the heart, the soul, the creative process of an immigrant in 1898 in America. It's, I mean, it's, it's the most charming, beautiful, sort of heartbreakingly lovely, hopeful thing like tennis rackets and you know like little lovers and butterflies it's just gorgeous right and and it's just a piece of life itself and i mean yeah it's an immigrant i mean the immigrant part is just like stunning you know so i'm crying i'm like verklempt already <laughs> verklempt um which is a good sign you know uh so that is our our opening quilt today Wonderful, right? Diobeb, it's my pleasure. Believe me, I was like, oh, this is it. Uh, so I'll put the link to this, to the entry at the Jewish Museum, um, put the link to that. Oh, wait, I have another picture. Well, yeah, look, so so that was, that's the quilt hanging. It seemed bigger to me. I, I, I you know, I'm sure the measurements are somewhere, but I, I just, uh, I don't know, when I saw this picture of it hanging, uh, it was seemed smaller, uh, struck me as being uh, slightly smaller than I, it would be. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we have a discord server and I do show notes after every show. Uh, I export the episode to YouTube. So it's around forever. Uh, the silly outrageous things that I say and probably will say in the future will be around forever, uh, because I put the shows on YouTube and on the, in the discord, I, um, do show notes where I include a bunch of links so you can look, look at this stuff on your own. Okay. Okay. So here's the deal. I know I want to see the back too. And if I miss anybody, okay. Okay. So here, here's the scoop. I, um, there is a project. There was a project. Okay. There was a, an exhibit, a project, a phenomenon. Um, called The Artist and the Quilt, okay? And we're gonna talk about it tonight. I've, I've gotten together a lot of images for you and hopefully the book, the book that tells the story of this project that began in 1977 and culminated 
in a show in like 19, I think 1984. So, yeah. Um, there's a book that tells the story of this whole thing. And conveniently, that book is on archive.org. So we have, we have a text, you know, that we can refer to that I'll need to be referring to as I sort of parse this story out with you in real time. So, okay. Don't read ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, view, full screen. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Hang on. Okay, I'm gonna put this up here. So now if some if any of you out there have heard of this um, heard of this uh, exhibit, then that will be that will be lovely. But if no one has, that will be lovely too, because we will discover these things together. Okay. So this is the cover of the book. Um, hey Sibby! Sibby Sibby Mac, I'm so glad you dropped in to say hi. We love you. We're glad you're here. Enjoy your dinner. Um, okay, hang on. Let me just get, I was, I have been looking at this for hours today. Um, and I just need to get my thoughts in order. I told Eric, I was like, I may have over-prepared because I don't know where to start. So here's where I'm going to start. Okay. Here's where I'm going to start. Got my little iPad here. I'm just going to read to you just a little bit from the introduction uh, from the book, The Artist and the Quilt. So this is the cover of the book. I am going to read to you just a little bit um, from the introduction, okay? Because I think that's the best way to start. <laughs> um, and then we'll just go from there. Introduction. The Artist and the Quilt. This was published in 1980, uh, 1983. 1983. Okay. And it is by, well, edited by Charlotte Robinson. There are a bunch of different people write uh, pieces of this book. Okay. Quilt Project. Oh, my head's cut off there. Okay. Uh, a personal memoir. In the heady atmosphere of the 1970s, amidst the excitement of the women's movement, three artists from New York and Washington, D.C., Dorothy Gillespie, Alice Baber, and I, and say who was, reading, who was writing. Hold on. Okay. The person who's I think it's Charlotte. I think it's Charlotte. Okay. So, oh, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Sorry. Um, the three of us were discussing the ways in which women were bringing their own experiences, their personal female vision, into mainstream art. Mainstream art. Through such unusual media as performance, body art, diaries, weaving, and even china painting and needlework. We conceived the idea of celebrating the year 1975, designated by the United Nations as International Year of the Woman. Okay. Um, we decided to celebrate by asking prominent women artists to design quilts. There was a certain irony to our idea. Nothing has been more crucial to the radical changes in the art of this century than the eagerness of artists to experiment with new media, especially those using high technology in order to expand the definition of what art comprises. Yet new, in this case, meant a form of art practiced by women for 400 years. Not sure where they got that number, but okay. And for the most part, reserved exclusively for them. We were considering a return to a truly indigenous art form and in order to celebrate a contemporary phenomenon, the women's movement. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here already, okay? I'm going to read a little bit more. Because this is the important part. From the beginning, we were anxious to eliminate the hierarchical division between fine arts and crafts that has evolved over the last 300 years. Okay. 
I'm going to keep going. That separation between visually distinguished articles created for aesthetic pleasure and those created for practical use. Quilts, defined as articles made for practical use, have been excluded from consideration as fine or mainstream art. Yet there is nothing unartistic about the medium. Op art, a favorite genre of the 1960s, was foreshadowed 200 years ago by women who, with no formal education, mastered the ex exacting geometry of complex, hard-edged quilting. I'm like, eh, eh, eh. I, I don't want to sway you. I just want to, I mean, okay. <laughs> by focusing on the quilt as an art form, we would be making a statement about our identities as artists, as female artists governed by both masculine and feminine principles and shaped by our cultural conditioning. We would explore a rich history that runs from the padded clothing of ancient Persia to the highly developed quilts of 18th century England. <laughs> yeah, and this is wrong. And to American colonial patchworks born of the absence of fabrics and made one square at a time under the harshest pioneer conditions. I mean, that's incorrect, right? I mean, the colonists and the pioneers were different for one thing. But okay. So... Looking back seven years to that conversation, we appear so innocent. Had we known the obstacles or guessed the difficulties we would face, I doubt we would have taken the first step toward executing our idea. We were blessed with ignorance. <laughs> okay. So the first, one of the first pictures they, they have here is this one. <laughs> it, it, this is from the book. Um, sorry, let me catch up here uh, on, the, on the chat. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, Belle was born in 75. Eric was born in 77. It was a good year indeed. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Susan, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, it's just a guy sewing. Akhil, I'm so glad you're back. I'm so glad you're here. I mean, this is a good time to be here. <laughs> SJ, I can hear you shouting from here. Exactly. I was pausing because, because of you. It's true. I'm with you. So, okay. There's a, I mean, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just want to get to what this picture is about. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. This, this, this picture is um, uh, something that inspired them. Okay. So, how to begin? So, so, so let me just recap. They want to get women artists, fine artists, female, fine artists, to make a quilt. So, okay. That's, that's what they have. How to begin. Um, and, uh, and then, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So then it, then it uh, changes just a little bit. Sorry. So then it changes to, they're going to put, they're going to pair up a fine artist, a, a, a painter, a sculptor, you know, working at the top of her field. I don't know if any of you know, you know, Miriam Shapiro, Alice Neal, the very famous portraitist, Alice Neal. Um, both of them were involved in this project. I'll just tell you that in terms of like, okay, you know, what was happening? What are they doing? They wanted to get top artists, female artists, um, and pair them up with the finest needle workers. That's one of the things they said, pair them up with really talented, really expert, uh, uh, experienced needle workers, quilters, to execute the artist's design in a quilt, okay? Uh, they talk about this corn thing. Um, <laughs> for months, we oh, so how to begin? Our first need was for a finished quilt, a prototype to show others uh, invited to participate. But before you make a quilt, you need a quilter. For months, we searched the Washington area quilt exhibitions. After half a year, we spotted a design so fresh and original, sewn with such impeccable skill, we knew we had found our first needle artist. The piece looked like an ear of corn, a soft sculpture made to stand proudly in a collector's living room. <laughs> Closer examination revealed a puffy yellow quilt rolled up and tucked into a stitch green fabric husk. Do you see that? So that's a puff quilt, a yellow puffer quilt, just rolled up. I didn't know that. Like when I first saw this, I was like, oh, wow, it's like a sculpture. But it's it's really like a functional quilt rolled up into a corn. I love it. I think it's amazing. 
Um, the person with the artistry and imagination to create this quilt was Bonnie Persinger. Uh, we soon enticed her into the project to make the first quilt from my design. Like paintings, quilts offer great freedom of choice in color, form, and texture. Our goal was to explore new imagery and techniques. Okay. So here, so th he, the thing is, is that they got a bunch of people to do this. And it, it began with the artist who would sketch or draw, you know, or otherwise create a design. The artist did it. The artist was in charge of designing the quilt. And then the quilter or quilters would make it. Here, this is, here's the sketch. So that's, I had to take screenshots of, um, yeah. Yes, 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 Susan, you're right. Um, so, so, so the sketch, the artist would begin doing the sketch. Oh yeah, I had to take screenshots because the, many of the quilts I have really good pictures for um, because many of the quilts are at the International Quilt Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, but the sketches were only available for me to get for you uh, through the book. So I took screenshots. So, so, so this picture, you know, the artist who, who made this was Ellen Lanyon. Okay. And then Ellen would work with a quilt maker to create the quilt version. And what was really strange about this exhibit, this whole project, and you might have already like kind of thought about it is like so this is this is artwork that the that the artist created okay with paint right it's like a watercolor painted piece and then so she did that and then the quilter made it out of fabric and their whole goal was to like erase the line between quilter like the crafter, the artisan, and the artist. And I don't know about you, but I don't think that, I think they did the opposite of what they were after, right? Because to me, it's like they're just, <laughs> the, the, quilt, the quilt makers were just sort of, you know, executing, they were just trying to make a painting into a quilt, you know? I, I think I think this was so here's this is Alice Neal, okay? The famous, the great Alice Neal, the portrait port, portraitist. And that's her painting back there, okay? And and the quilt so she painted that, okay, and then the quilt maker turned it into a quilt. Successful? Uh I I mean I think the quilt maker did an amazing job turning a painting, an oil painting into a quilt. But like, how does that, I mean, the, you see what I'm saying? Like, like if you're, if you're a great artist and you do your stuff and, and the, and you say, okay, good, make this into a quilt. And the quilt maker sort of does that. You're, you're saying that it, there is a division. There's the artist and the quilter. <laughs> And they're not the same person. And so, yeah, exact. Okay, so yes. So, <laughs> okay, ah, you're so good. So, yeah, you have to, you have to get this book. You definitely do. Um, yes, thank you, Amy. I'm not sure, Amy says, I'm not sure painting it first makes the quilt art. Agreed. Okay, let's let's go. I'll show you. I have many many pictures for you, and we'll we'll look at a few more too. This is the quilt. Okay, first of all, oh sorry sorry, ah sorry, that's you know an Alice Neal painting rendered in quilt. Um, Marianne says I'm not feeling the motivation to do that. <laughs> Same. I mean I just totally I, yeah. It feels like they created more of a dividing line. Yes, Sue John. Nerd alert. We have special emotes, so um, if you want to send one of the little graduation caps. To, uh, to, well, to everyone, you're all getting this. Um, I'm a little offended by the whole thing, Elizabeth says. It's like they thought quilters couldn't be artistic. Ding, 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 ding. But is it, but Little Bird Stitch says, isn't that demoting the quilter? Yes, akin to the draftsman and the architect. Mmm. I need a crisp. Mm-hmm. The Marine. They're great. But did they design a quilt? No. I mean, okay. Some, 
So this is the artwork. I need to have these side by side, but I will. This is an artwork. And this is the quilt. Artwork by the artist and the quilt by the quilter. Um, and some of the people did do some more collab kind of deal. Okay. Some of the artists and the quilters like fully divided, fully divided into two groups, the artist and the quilter, uh, collaborated some of them, but many of them just sort of figured out how to do a painting in fabric, which to me makes very little sense. I mean, it's a painting, it's a painting make a quilt that's a quilt. I mean, you know, it's not so simple. You know what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, quilters are artists there. And what I'm going to show you, I have a big folder, a big juicy folder full of art quilts that were being made. Okay. I have to read you this. I have to read you something. I'm going to just read you this. It was because there was a lot going on in the art quilt world at this time. And, and this point has been made many times uh, is that, you know, while they were busy, having these women who, I mean, the, the needle workers were paid, I think, and she says it in the book, like $250 total, total. Here's an original artwork. Okay. It's the original artwork and that's the quilt. <laughs> they were paid. I'm going to get back to the chat here. Um, paid like $250 for thousands and thousands of hours, you know, total. And the artists in a lot of cases, you know, I mean, they had to, they had some of the artists were, of course, they're not going to do this for free. So there were grants that they had to get and they had a benefactor for a little while who didn't. The whole thing took seven years. I can't believe that they finished it because for a lot of reasons, but one of them is there, they talk in the introduction, she talks about how relationships were like destroyed and she's not like, oh, it was terrible. She's like many, many of the artists and quilters found relationships, you know, drifting away. And like, I mean, it's clear that this, there was a lot of, it was not, that it, it aged these women, you know, like who, who were involved and certainly the women who, who did it, who, who started it, instigated it. This is a quilt. There's Bonnie Persinger. So she helped make this, uh, that's the quilt too. That's the quilt. Look, the colors look different, but that's the quilt and this is rolled up. Um, but that they finished it is huge. I think it's amazing actually that they, they saw the project through to the end, but I mean, it clearly was just very, very upsetting, uh, in a lot of ways. And, and they get, they get points for finishing it. Okay. Sorry. I got to go back here. Um, okay. Da, 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 da. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Pe yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Susan R. Michael says, yes, it does come across as strangish. They thought about what was a strong thing that would represent women's work. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, paint by numbers and fabric, little bird. That's what I'm talking about. It's like here, here, plebe execute my painting. I mean, it's just deeply baked. It's baked in the hierarchy is baked in. And I just feel like at some point the people who were doing this were like, oh, <laughs> like conceptually, fundamentally, we have a problem here, but they, they kept going and, and it's amazing. It's amazing. Nothing has been done like that before or since. I, I know, I know it's like misguided. I know, I know. So Yvonne says, I wonder if roles were reversed. If, if roles were reversed, would they still qualify the end work of the painter as art? Uh huh. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Brilliant. Nerd alert. Big time. Exactly. So if a paint, mm, if a painter painted a quilt, right. In, interpreted or just painted a quilt that a quilter had made, right. The roles were reversed. The quilter starts and the painter has to interpret the quilt in paint. Would it be as good? Right. I would say the answer is no. <laughs> right. By like the guidelines they have set. Right. So Judy Matheson, some of you will, will recognize her name. Um, most of the women who were involved, uh, were white. I don't know about queer, uh, you know, anything like that. Or, you know, I think cisgendered women, I don't, I don't know that they didn't talk about that part. Um, Betty, 
um, the artist here is a woman of color. We'll see a picture of her, but I mean, 95%, you know, white ladies. And you know, that doesn't, it's just a fact, right? It's just a fact. Um, and there's Betty. And, and I think, and I think there were, um, yeah, there were collaborations that that happened that were happy, but the general sense that I get, and you'll get it, there's like a sadness to that introduction. It's crazy. Let's take a look at this quilt again. I like, you know, it's cool. That, that's cool. That's cool, because it's like, you know, here are the sketches, and that seems like a little bit of a collab. Um, but let me, so this is a review from Woman's Art Journal. Okay, wait, sorry, I gotta get all these brilliant things. Um, you got a call? Damn it. Val, you weren't supposed to get one. You're in the last hour of work. It's going to go quick. As Jay says, it's like if I made a mini quilt and then I laid it on a copier and made a Xerox of it. The copy would be just like my quilt, except different and not great. And why would I ever do that? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, you're, you're all smart and you're funny too. Um, Susan says, right, I'm not as impressed as I was without seeing the actual work for the exhibit. Kind of a letdown, honestly. Right. Marianne says, this is like conceptual art, which usually passes me by. Mm -hmm. These put, these quilts are sailing right over my head. Okay, thank you. Clarification. Okay, Susan needs clarification. Um, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> she's clarifying. Um, she's let down that the artist did not actually do more of the making. Yeah, oh yeah. I've got here, let me let me give you some more. So this is Harmony Hammond. You may know her name, fairly, fairly well-known uh, artist, Lisa the Period. This is her drawing. This is a quote. Okay. Um, victory is in the effort. And that's the thing, Sue, is that it is amazing, like I said, that it got done. Got a hand in that. And this is a cool quilt, right? It's a very, I think it's very cool, but that it was made because an artist sketched it, you know, or painted it. Here's a picture though. I actually do kind of like that. Um, I mean, I do. Here's Harmony Hammond explaining details. See, explaining details from her quilt designed to Bob Douglas. So she's, I mean, she's telling her how to do it or something. It's like, okay. So this is from Woman um, Arts Journal. Agreed, agreed. <laughs> Jill, I know. I have not read this yet. This is a review, a write-up about this exhibit, about this whole project in 1984 issue of Woman's Art Journal. Okay. I don't know what I don't know what they're gonna say about it. I don't know what they're gonna say. We'll see if we even like want to read this. And I have a New York Times review as well, which is pretty short and could be good. This is a, a review of the book. This is a review of the book and the whole thing. So, okay. In Western art, sorry, Annie Shaver Crandell is who's writing this. In Western art, there has been a long and distinguished tradition of artists generating designs while up using others to execute the work. Artists from Raphael to Sonia Delaunay designed cartoons from which others wove tapestries and Peter Paul Rubens and Lavinia Fontana, among others, used assistants to paint the dull stuff in the background of some of their paintings. Anonymous master carvers organized stone masons to sculpt the large ensembles that decorate the great cathedrals of Europe. Today, there are foundries devoted exclusively to the fabrication of artist sculptures. Jeff Koons, right? Uh, Murakami. Um, and studios where artists who design prints receive technical help with their execution. There's also a long-standing tradition of people, this is the quilt, by the way, that's the art, a uh, long-standing tradition of people working collaboratively to produce art. For example, in Baroque Rome, okay, okay enough. The American quilt-making tradition has also fostered communi communality, communality. This has, however, generally been confined to the quilting proper, the sewing together of the three layers, top, surface, backing, and filler except for album and friendships, friendship quilts, which are often comprised uh, of blocks contributed by a number of people. The typical procedure was for one woman to design and execute a quilt top and invite friends to assist in the less creative task of stretching the quilt on a frame and the time-consuming quilting. The nature of the collaborations described in the artist and the quilt differs from these historical examples. I think the quilt is, this is, 
pretty amazing, right? This is Miriam Shapiro, very famous, accomplished Miriam Shapiro. Um, and that's the quilt, okay. The nature of the collaborations described in the artist and the quilt differs from these historical examples. Planners Charlotte Robinson, a painter, mm -hmm, and Alice uh, and Dorothy Gillespie and Alice Baber envisioned a collaboration between pairs consisting of an artist who generally works in non-fiber media and a quilt maker who would execute the design made by the artist. The quilts were to be made independently of one another. The resulting 20 quilts, 18 created by the artist slash quilt maker pairs plus two signature quilts of the participants' hands. Okay, that was what you saw on the cover of the thing. Have been acquired by Philip Morris Inc. for its fine art collection and are currently traveling to museums around the country. Um, such a project seems natural for this age of greater respect for women's art, for collaborative projects, and for media not typically included in histories of art. And it does indeed qualify in all categories. The planners were eager to eliminate the hierarchical distinction between craft and fine art. They wanted to en enable what the marketplace considers minor, quote unquote, minor artists to work with, quote unquote, big name artists. As they had... <laughs> I guess we'll pair you with a star, little, little peon. Doesn't that feel amazing? You're so special. As they had to begin somewhere, and since the project was conceived by artists, artists were involved first, quilt makers second. Unfortunately, okay, here, this is what I wanted to get to. Unfortunately, the patronizing attitude of the art world crept into the project's conception. Okay, I knew this would be good. The collaborations described in The Artist and the Quilt achieve varying degrees of success. Many of the pairs... Okay, I don't have the quilt for this one, but it, the quilt looks exactly like this sketch. Sorry, it's not a great resolution. Many of the pairings were fruitful for both designer and quilt maker. Some quilt makers became more respectful of their art um, and went on to create experimental pieces of their own. Great. In some cases, however, the quilt maker seems to have been truly secondary in the arrangement. Someone mentioned Faith Ringgold. This, yes, this is Faith Ringgold's original sketch. She worked with her mom to make this. And we'll get back to Faith Ringgold, okay. And we can just look at this beautiful piece while I'm reading this. Um, several expressed dissatisfaction with the project's ground rules. Though given leeway to interpret designs, they complained of feeling that, in the end, the design was the artist, not the quilt makers. The nature of quilt making is such that certain features of composition, for instance, straight lines are easier to seam than curves, suggest themselves to a designer familiar with the medium. In fact, some of the work submitted by the artists indicate that they had little feel for what could be achieved with sewn cloth. In the book, the, uh, the quilts are organized into five groups. Okay. Um, the first, described as, quote, overall pattern up to the surface, more or less traditional style, bright flat colors, pieced in applique, includes, includes six quilts. Um, okay. Okay, that's the last thing. Here's what I'm going to do now. Okay, just so we can have this. I got to catch up here. Um, hang on, I've got this. I'm going to pull up the book. Okay, the actual book. Because the... Um, because uh, the resolution isn't amazing on on this this book, but you know, we all we love our, our archive.org, do we not? Isn't it amazing? Look, the book is on archive.org. You can check it out. You can check it out. Um, I wanted to get some good screenshots though, instead of just going through the book with you, but I'm now I'm gonna flip, flip, some, flip some stuff. So here we are, you see, this is the book. And we're gonna take a look. Yeah, I know, Akhil, I love the floral heart you should look at Miriam Shapiro's work. Miriam Shapiro is amazing. Um, yeah, agreed, so demented. Um, okay, okay, okay. Everyone loves the heart quilt. That's great. I do too, I do too. So here we go. I'm gonna keep reading a little bit of this as I flip, cause, cause, and so here are all the, the quilts at the beginning. And here's the painful story the painful story. See, this is the woman rising quilt. I saw, I showed you the sketch, but didn't have the quilt. I mean, the sketch is just absolutely what the quilt is. And you know, the quilt is like, 
Yeah. See, I, I swear I see tension in so many of these pictures. I swear. And, and I know that, you know, we know how it went <laughs> um, for a lot of them, not everybody. But I just see some some like tense faces like like right. Look, <laughs> she does not look happy. <laughs> oh, she does not look happy. Um, but she might just be, you know, she might just be listening. Damn it, I keep doing that. Sorry. Let's see. You see, there's kind of a kind of a conversation happening there. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This thing is very touchy. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna zoom in right now. I'm just gonna put it normal, and we're gonna flip. Okay. 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 Um, and what the reason I wanted to pull it up now is because they go through, she's talking here in this article about how the book is divided up. I'll flip through this. Um, yeah, that's the history part. So Miriam Shapiro wrote a piece in this book, which is, which is pretty cool. That's a Miriam Shapiro work. The color's pretty weird on it. I encourage you to look at Miriam Shapiro's work. It's just really great. Quilts, she often used quilts, um, quilt motifs. Uh, Lucy Lepard is an art critic. Um, yeah, the book is really great. I mean, it's great because of what it represents, which is this very strange moment in the art quilt story, art slash quilt story. Um, I just want to get to some of the quilts and the art. Okay, da, da, da. that essay is awful. Skip it. So you see, okay, look, here is this side by side stuff. I'm going to get to the side by side stuff. Um, quilt type. So this is what she's talking about. This is this section. Quilt type. I, I don't even know. The overall pattern up to the surface, more or less traditional style, bright flat colors, pieced and applique. I'm not quite sure what that means. Like, obviously it leans, <laughs> it means what it says, but like, yeah. So this is good. This is good. We can see everything side by side. I mean, maybe I should have done that from the beginning. I don't know. Remember, it's all an exploration. Remember when I said that? As I'm flipping, I'm going to skim through this and see if there's, um, I kind of want her to get real mad in this article and be like, what the F? What is this? Why did they do this? Um, but right now she's just going through the, the sections. Um, Oh, small factual errors mar the book. Okay. The artist and the quilt both exhibit and the book has added momentum to the art world's emerging recognition of quilt making as an art form. Uh, art form. During the 1970s, interest in antique quilts could be assessed by the enthusias enthusiastic reception given uh, the Whitney Museum's 1972, it's 1971, Where's the factual errors now, honey? Okay. 1971 quilt show, the brisk sales of Button's annual quilt calendar in areas without significant quilt making populations, and the proliferation of bed coverings and quilt books. But contemporary quilts, beautiful though they may be, were seldom exhibited as art. A subsequent groundswell of interest in the quilt as art can be gauged by the mushrooming number of exhibition listings in Quilt, Maker, Quilt Maker's newsletter magazine, Quilter's newsletter magazine, and the mounting competitiveness in the last three Quilt National exhibits, right? Quilt National, the first Quilt National was in 1979. Okay, so at the time this is happening, the art quilt is exploding. So well, here we go. So what's strange about this is like, there were, there were artists, like we're gonna see Nancy Crow and you know, Michael James, he's a guy, it's fine, whatever, who were doing really innovative stuff with quilts, you know, as art, studio art quilts. Meanwhile, this project was, was having just these needle workers execute regular art, you know, non-textile art into textiles. And so, so when someone mentioned, you know, someone said the word misguided, I mean, it, 
I just can't believe they finished it because it seems like at some point, like I said, somebody is going, this actually is doing the opposite of what we wanted it to do. I think we should like say good effort and maybe go to Quilt National and see what quilters, quilt artists are doing with quilts, you know? Showed you some of these. Um, okay. So let me just skim the rest of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, what do you think? I guess, I guess we're, we're all in agreement. I mean, yeah. Wow. Okay. So Demented says, I have trouble giving the artist credit for work they didn't do. I know. Tense women when we see them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Test fabric samples for their quilt. Um, there's just a lot of she put it in the beginning it just really made me feel bad because it said friendships were friendships dissolved i mean i think she actually says like friendships dissolved or you know faded away yeah this one's awesome isn't it it's great this quilt is in the international quilt museum collection so they have a lot of the quilts not all of them i think or do they they might have have all of them i think what did they say 19 of the actual collab collaborations. Well, there's a smile, that's good. Hmm. But yeah, look, it says, art historians Mary Garrard and Norma Brood admire quilt by Shapiro and Price. I see Price <laughs> making this quilt. This extraordinary work, right? Executing Miriam Shapiro's sketch, you know, drawing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So distracted, I know, Susan, I know. It, this project did not make quilts art. It's interesting how they tried. Marianne says this whole endeavor is asking an interesting question. It just hasn't answered it. In your opinion, I agree. It's, it's just, I told you it was going to be, it's a very interesting moment in the world of the art, <laughs> the art and the quilt, or the art quilt, whatever. Quilters are already making art quilts. Exactly, exactly. And I'm going to show you some now. Okay, wait, let me flip through few more of these. I mean, look at that. It's like, it was, it was a drawing. This is, this is a drawing. It is a very complicated, sketchy, lovely drawing with colored pencils on like mottled paper. It's like, make that into a quilt. Um, let me think about it. No, <laughs> no. Let me, let me do something else. Right. With, with it's, it's cool. It's cool. I just love this woman, right? Like Rosemary Wright. I mean, she is figuring out how to make this. Oh yeah, so they got grants and stuff. So the artists, you know, I think got paid. I don't think Miriam Shapiro or Faith Ringgold, you know, were doing this as a favor. So I'm pretty sure that the artists, you know, got paid. I mean, look at this. It's like, make that into a quilt. And what's interesting is like this kind of work was being done in the art quilt world, you know, but, but freely, right? No one was like indentured servant to an artist. Um, Holmes says all they needed was a couple quilters on the planning committee. Yeah. A few minor adjustments could have prevented some of this tension. Yeah. I agree. Art cannot be, be mimicked. Demery says you have to wonder why they stuck it out. Yep. So what was the allure for the quilters? Were they hoping they would be taken more seriously by the traditional art market? I think, I think so. And I think that is a great reason to read this book because there is a lot of writing, as you can see. Um, see look at this, you know, the classic, right? Almost sort of Georgia O'Keeffe, you know, painter, the painter and her thing, you know, and then you've got this like person you know, draft. Yeah. Yeah. The draftsman and the architect someone mentioned. Okay. Just a few more here. Yeah. This is Faith Ringgold and her mother. Um, miscellaneous. This is miscellaneous. Very interesting. Okay. The technical skill. Um, yeah. And Marianne said the same thing. The technical skill of these quilters making these artworks, uh, not quilts makes me really curious to see what the quilters could make if given free reign to create whatever they wanted. Okay. So, I am going to kind of answer that question or, or, or get us to um, think about that very thing. And I will suggest to you all that archive.org 
has has the book, baby. It's got it right now. And uh, I don't need, I don't, I don't think my checking it out keeps you from checking it out. I believe Charles looked into this, but I will, look, I will return it now. I'll return it now because it'll be there. It'll always be there. I have a copy at home in Chicago, but I don't have one now. So I will put that link in the discord and you can all read it. So here is what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you, I went through and got, I pulled a bunch of quilts made in made in the, like during the same time period art quilts okay um and we're gonna look at them because these are quilts that were made at the same time without any artist showing away you know like these are just people and i i put this one first because we looked at this just the last show you know jean ray Laurie, pioneer uh artist who worked with textiles you know and and other things but she really was using the textile as her medium uh, from the start, you know, not using a painting. Um, okay, great. The article in the New York Times. I've I've got it here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Susan, I've got it. I think in my notes, but um, yeah, the New York Times says, despite their good intentions. It seems that the, the women, the organizers, were ignorant of the advances being made in quilts by fiber artists who understood the formal language of the vi visual arts. During the show's germination period, the quilt designs by famous artists were being matched and at times outdistanced by designs emerging from a craft's orientation. This is Jean Ray Laurie again, you know. That's, that's, he put it. No, she, Patricia, uh, mm, mm, mm. Malarker put it put it perfectly when she said that you know while they were copying designs, art quilters like Pauline Burbage, you know, worship at her altar. Pauline Burbage were doing extraordinary things, right? Um. Mm -hmm, yeah. What did the quilters do after the exhibit? I would like to know as well. And Caitlin would be interested to see a project where the quilters were asked to make a quilt that was more in conversation with a specific work of art than reproducing a design. Absolutely. Uh, this is Yvonne Wells, one of my favorite quilt makers. An unusual quilt for what I know about Yvonne Wells. We'll look at Yvonne Wells one day. Just unbelievable. I think I have another quilt by Yvonne Wells um, in this little in this little parade. Um, this is Carol Breyer Fowler. She she made the quilt Corona too. We looked at that once. It's a very famous quilt. The first quilt that was machine quilted that won Best in Show at Paducah at the AQS show. Um, this is one of her more traditional looking quilts, but I mean, wow. And so this is 1983. I kind of pulled quilts from right in that 1977 to 1984-ish time period to show you what was going on. Yeah, the New York Times got it. Let's see what else they said. If they said anything anything else good. Um, okay, sorry. Yeah, Yvonne Porcella. Look at that. Um, okay. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know the 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 quilt that I didn't have a good picture. I didn't have a good picture of the quilt, but I had that low res drawing. It was it, the way this writer uh, describes it as a transmitter tower goddess, transmitter tower goddess, you know, with the like arms pointing up, you know, one. It says, uh, This writer in the New York Times says, it's doubtful if some of the quilts would be accepted in a high level craft show. For example, Mary Beth Edelson's transmitter tower goddess figure looks like a dated feminist poster. Ooh, burn! Were it not born into this August family, it's unlikely it would ever hang on a museum wall. Furthermore, the hybrid works invite the question of whether the concept and intention preceding the creation of an object can elevate that object beyond its intrinsic merit. It's not the value of a work often only known after the fact is not the value of a work often known only after the fact when it is clear not what was programmed programmed into it but what the artist's intuition demanded. 
Interesting. So this is um, Terry Mangott, very famous quilt. Um, it's called Dashboard Saints or St. Christopher Losing His Magnetism or something like that. It's the cover of, um, it's the quilt on the cover of the art quilt. Very seminal book by Peggy McMorris, um, Penny McMorris and Michael Kyle. I remember looking at this quilt, pictures of it, of course, when I was younger and just, I just couldn't believe like all of the pieces, you know? Terry Hancock Mangot. I mean, just one of the like giants, right, of the art quilt genre. And I just don't even understand this <laughs> in, in the best possible way, right? Um, yeah, the kimono is amazing, Elizabeth. And I, I was looking at um, Jean Ray Laurie, and Jean Ray Laurie did a few sort of kimono y pieces, like long kind of tunic things. It was, it was a whole thing in the 80s, and I want to know more. I want to know more. So, wow, you know, that's that's a real masterpiece made in at, around the time the artist and the quilt was, was happening. Uh, Jean Hughes, I believe. Gorgeous. This, you know, this kind of transparency that she's working with seems like, you know, some of the quilters and the artists in the quilt project were, you know, figuring out how to kind of layer fabric to give a sense of paint or, you know, yeah, layer to layers of yeah, layers of paint or tonal shifts and things, and I feel like Jean Hughes does that brilliantly. Oh yeah, this is great. Who is this? This this person is new to me. Katie Pasquini Masopust. Uh, Heaven's Reach. Look at that! Isn't that awesome? And this quilt is yeah, it's not. It's a quilt made for the wall. It is an art quilt because by definition. It's made for the wall. It's not made to cover anybody to go to sleep. It's not made for your nap. What a great nap <laughs> that would be, right? Um, it's just great. In fact, I put two of hers in here. Have you ever heard of this person? Has anybody ever heard of heard of anyone? Uh, heard of this person? Um, I, yeah, yeah, Holmes, the bling by Cat Jones. Yeah, that diamond, diamond quilt we saw. I just, my favorite genre right now in quilts in the quilt thing <laughs> is um is the the art quilts of like the 80s it's my favorite thing the, the pictorial quilts of the 1960s and 70s will always be they will always be my favorite remember it's a law of the universe if there's a animal in a quilt and i can't tell what it is and it was hand cut and sewn i love it i love that quilt it's a great quilt if i can't tell if an animal is a squirrel or a badger or a dog. If it's a pictorial quilt and it's got an indeterminate animal on it, it's my favorite quilt. Yes, and <laughs> my other sort of love right now is this studio art quilt work in the 1980s because, I mean, look at the fabrics. Okay, let's just look at the fabrics. If you've been making quilts for any length of time, well, I should say, if you're my age uh, or a little bit younger, or older and you you've been doing quilt stuff I mean look at the fabrics these this was a time when there wasn't nearly as much fabric as there is now I mean that's part of what's so interesting to me about the art quilts of the 80s is of course there you have people using you know, doing their own hand dye like Jan Myers Newberry was doing hand dyed work um, lots of people were you know there were textiles to be had okay and some people were mixing silks and you know linens and all that stuff so they were expanding their fabric palette so that they could have more colors and have more whatever painting on their quilts you know but like this person aside from this sort of like i don't know it's like a puffer jacket <laughs> material maybe um that's fabric that like my mom had for sure like this let's let's yeah like okay this i remember this i remember this literal fabric right here the blue it was in our house you know there's nothing this green oh yeah oh yeah this all these greens this red there just wasn't that much fabric out there because the quilt industry had not yet really kicked into gear it had not whirred up into you know the engine had not let yet been 
you know, turned on, right? It, it, there just wasn't nearly as much fabric. And so these art quilts, there's something about them that just is mesmerizing to me because, sorry, I'm gonna go back really quick to Terry Mangott, okay? Because some of this, this, they almost look similar in a way. Just there's a, there's a purple that shows up a lot, and there's um, there's a green that kind of shows a lot shows up a lot. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I see I still see the the this 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 this. It's like this magenta. I, I you know you know what I'm saying? Look at this this wonderful print here. So so there's something like like that, you know, that I, that I see. And it just, maybe it's because it makes me think of like my mom's sewing room, you know, probably that's what it is. Um, were they reindeer on the priest's robe? Let's see. Ah, you know what? I think they are reindeer. And because I can tell what they are, this is not my favorite quilt. They're too good. They're just, they're just too good. And I just, I just, not approved. not approved. They are reindeer. Um, okay, so this is the same woman, Katie Pesquini Masopust Amethyst, made in 1985. Uh, yeah, that's some shiny stuff. That's like what my jazz choir dress was made out of. Yeah. Um, let's see, Katie is more, oh, oh, okay, 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 you people do know about Katie. Um, okay, wow, wait a minute, wait a minute. You love Katie's work. Okay, Bip, awesome, awesome. The diamond quilt, yep. Twitch, twitched out. Wait, so demented. Twitch, twitch out. Oh no. Well, you're back, right? So demented, you're back, you're back. I hope Twitch is not misbehaving. Uh, she's still making work. Great, great, great. You've got a great, oh, a great tutorial on her website. That's awesome. I don't know this person at all. Little Bird Stitch says Katie's more known for her fractured landscapes. She She's authored several technique books. That's so cool. <laughs> SJ says that, that would not lay flat for me, nor me. Dee Marie says so much done here with so little variety to work with. Exactly. This is Yvonne Wells, by the way. Brilliant. It's called Mothership. Yeah, Mothership, 1980. Well, made between 1980 and 90s. Could be a little bit later. Um, New Elizabeth recognizes some of those fabrics too. Yeah, totally. Um, and Marianne said, I was going to say the fabric is dated, especially in comparison to the saturated colors of today, but you remember that fabric. I mean, it is dated. I think it's fair to say that. Look, Nancy Halpern, one of my favorites of all time. One of my favorites of all time. I, I, I love her work so much. And this, you know, it's look that lavender. My mom had tons of that. That was that lavender. That lavender was everywhere. I swear. But look at this quilt. I mean, it looks like it's it's the Alps or something. You know, it's called archipelago. <laughs> I called her. I ta I called her. My first. I might have told you the story before, but when I was uh, working on a. What was it? Um, Massachusetts, Massachusetts issue of Quilt Folk was my first issue when I was not a writer, but working as an editor as well. And I was like, mom, I need to find some great people in Connecticut to reach out to for Quilt Folk magazine. And, and she was like, I think Nancy Halpern lives in Connecticut. I was like, no, no, not Connecticut, sorry, Massachusetts. And I got in touch with her and it was like, it was so sad. She was, she was, first person, the only person who declined to be interviewed by Quilt Folk, for Quilt Folk, to have her picture taken. And I was devastated because I was new at like getting people, you know, inviting people to be in the magazine. And the magazine wasn't as, you know, it was newer than in 2015 or whatever it was, 16. But she, but she was like, I just don't do that anymore. I just don't, I'm not really doing interview quilt industry stuff and she she seemed I mean I'll never forget it she seemed pretty bitter I mean she said something like I mean bitter is kind of a judgmental term but but she was not she's like no I don't like do any of that like that uh, -uh. like I had enough of that that kind of tone to it um and so you know I was so disappointed because I would just love to talk to her maybe I could talk to her now you know just just for just to talk to her because I think she's a genius, you know. Um, 
Holm says, would those have been colors that weren't typically available in the quilts they grew up with? Oh yeah, okay, so like the, the fabrics that the quilters in the 1980s, art quilters and other quilters, those fabrics weren't available when they were young. So to them, that palette was new and fresh. Thousand percent, thousand percent, makes sense to me. And Diobeb says, in the UK, you had Laura Ashley for those tiny prints in the 1970s and 80s. Oh yeah, the backbone of my mom's quilts, but these art quilts are brilliant, agreed. You know, Laura Ashley, I am so interested in Laura Ashley. I, I watched a couple of videos on about her on YouTube. I didn't realize she was, you know, Welsh, right? I'm right about that, right? And she had she had her her factory or her manufacturing thing in Wales and employed like all these people. This, of course, is Nancy Crow. I mean, Nancy Crow, man, what a what a legend. And do we see the the lavender? Yes, <laughs> that's the lavender. I'm telling you. But I mean, Nancy Crow, I gotta make my documentary. Can somebody please tell, my agent has to do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. The agent has to do it. The project, they're pitching the project. They're talking to people. I want to make my documentary, okay? So some production company, if you are a brother or a sister or a parent or a child, some fabulous production studio in Hollywood, will you please, let my agent know that they should talk or whatever, because I would like to interview some people before it's too late. Nancy Crow is not, you know, elderly person, whatever, but like a lot of these people, I'd really like to get them on camera in a very lovely Netflixy production level kind of way to talk about their work with them. Okay. So I'd really like to sell that documentary project. If you have any leads, perhaps, you know, Jane Fonda is your aunt or something like that. That would be, that would be great. Did you know Jane Fonda has a lot of the G's Ben quilts? Yes, she collects them or she did. She bought a lot of them as far as I know. Um, the, yeah, oh yeah. A little bird stitch. You mentioned that one of the Katie quilts would be so modern. Oh yeah, totally. Um, yeah, totally gorgeous. Painterly. Yeah, painterly Myra. That's an interesting word to use in context of the artist and the quilt, you know? It's probably why you said it, but painterly indeed, you know, these different things. Um, yep, 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 yep. Oh, oh, let's see. You appreciate about me so demented? You pr I appreciate about you is your ability to truly admire the artistic relevance of the dated, no matter what year it was made. Well, I'm glad if, if that's what you mean, that you appreciate that about, about me, that's great. Um, but yeah, totally. I mean, I just, I just love it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you think, you, so Demented says, I think a lot of cultures today don't appreciate that they will someday recognize their work is dated, their work is dated and not appreciate their artistic value. Thousand percent. The way I started my article, I may have mentioned this about in Modern Patchwork Magazine about quilts and fashion and cutting up quilts is like in 50 years, your modern quilts will be vintage and a home deck magazine will proclaim a vintage modern quilt is the coolest accessory for this season, you know, for, for the home this year. And your granddaughter will ask if she can take one of those old quilts to college and the fashion world will decide that the modern quilts that were made in 2010, 2020 are just divine and they will cut them up and they will use them for clothes. It will happen because <laughs> fashion repeats itself. And it's this, we're in the third wave right now of quilts being cut up for fashion. And like, you'd think like, yeah, well, Ooh, that's crazy. But, but it's that perspective that I'm talking about. So demented. It's like, yeah, everything's dated. Just give it time, you know, and, and modern quilts will be, be vintage. I mean, even look, look, even some of the ones, definitely, definitely those early modern quilts from like 2008. We're going to look at those in just a minute. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. I told you it might be a long time. Um, they look so, I mean, they look dated. All, uh, I'll say one word to you and so many of you will understand. Chevrons. <laughs> Can we just talk about 
about chevrons. They were everywhere. I mean, every, it was like white fabric, like pure white, solid fabric, white, and like ombre chevrons. <laughs> we all know what I'm talking about. We're talking about early modern quilts, right? So it's all happening. Um, a new kind of quilt by Dorothy Sieberling. Oh, that's good. Okay, Susan, definitely put that in the Discord, please, because that's not what the what article I was reading, and I would really like to know. Um, your sewing machine is a brother Laura Ashley edition, Holmes. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it had all the bells and whistles, and it was on clearance. Um, the first time Akil said, uh, the first time I heard the Laura Ashley was through Brothers, um, the sewing machine. Um, you, and then you, okay, okay, okay. You got the, the, okay, the sewing machine, the Laura Ashley sewing machine. I didn't know that even existed. Ken Burns is a quilt collector. I interviewed him. I got like 12 minutes with Ken Burns. He was delightful. Um, Kenny B. I still have his, I still have his cell phone number. They're like, here's his number. Destroy it, obviously. When you get off the phone, I was like, of course. And it's still in my planner from like, 2017 or something it's probably not in use but I had it for a second um yeah because Quilt Folk covered the Ken Burns exhibit at the International Quilt Museum we can talk about Ken Burns one day uh yep he did you're all exactly right so <laughs> Holmes is making quilts too small to cut up for coats jokes on you future hipsters indeed um yes the Pat Sloan quilt along quilts will be hot Amy says, maybe I'll start inserting little notes inside the quilt saying, don't cut this up for a jacket. You know what I was thinking? Sorry, let me, let me change this. I was thinking, this is Helix 2 by Virginia Randalls. Um, I was thinking, actually, and any of you could do this. Maybe all of you. If, if, there, if there's more than one person who thinks this is a good idea, do it. It could actually be really awesome if we all did it. But a really great quilt would be do not cut this up for clothes like in like paper pieced letters you know like this quilt is not a coat right like like you i love letters on quilts right you know letters on quilts are great super fun you could applique them you could piece them you know you could do so many different things but like to make a quilt that says don't cut up my quilt to make a pair of pants would be awesome because yeah you could put a little note in yeah this quilt is not a cutter I love that do it y'all do it if there were like it, it's it and everybody's quilt would be different oh ooh, okay oh my god I need a crisp okay that's seriously though we do our group quilt but that would be a very interesting exhibit right you know if 20 people do it or more. Think of all the different ways people would, 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 you know, express that or do that, you know, or say it. Who, who said, um, this quilt is not a cutter. Fabulous. It's great. You know, or do not cut, do not cut, uh, cut it out. <laughs> I'm telling you, that'd be awesome. That'd be so awesome. And then you could hang them all together and have a conversation about what to do with quilts that become vintage, right? That are dated. It's so weird, y'all, because when you look at the quilt clothes that are available, so many, um, those 80s quilts are clothes now. You can see them. It's not just these quilts from the 1890s or 1910s that are jackets and corsets and statement collars and things. It's they're they're cut, they're cutting up the '80s quilts too. You see the Laura Ashley prints. You see the the green and the lavender. I mean, it's those are old now. They're 40 years old now. It's very interesting. Um, this is not a coat. Oh my God, Holmes, I'm dead. This is not a coat. Nez pa peep or something like that, right? Right? That's non peep. Whatever the hell that is. Agree. Um, oh, you all are so brilliant. Okay. Oh, what are you saying? What are you saying? Um, okay. 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 I love it. Okay. Good, good, good. Oh no, you went too fast. Um, okay. Yes. Talk to Ken Burns about the documentary. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and I, I have a letter that I, yeah, okay. Totally. This quilt is not a cutter. Um, 
<laughs> that's like putting a curse on it, maybe. Um, Padma says, how tempting it would it be for the fashion industry to cut up the quilts and put that saying on the back of a jacket. Yeah. And it'll happen. It's like, it's a very Zen thing. You just kind of like, let it go, man. It's like, after we're gone, we have no control over what anyone does with our stuff. Make it part of the label. That's a good one. Oh, wait, just a guy sewing. I would like to make a don't cut me quilt. Yeah, don't cut me. <laughs> or I'll cut you. <laughs> um, SJ's is going to say, love this quilt to death, then bury your deceased pet in it. Oh, my God, that's great. Oh, my God. That's Yes, yes. Like instructions, instructions on, on what to do. It's like your last will and testament, you know, your last quilt and testament. Y'all, I'm not tired tonight. Listen, so Demented, that's what I was thinking, a special exhibit for the modern quilt build. That's where I pictured it hanging. Here's Michael James. That's where I pictured it hanging is a special exhibit for the modern quilt guild. Um, I'm going to give my big lecture on quilts and fashion. Maybe that's how I end the lecture is like, here is the challenge. Here is the unofficial quilt con or I don't know. They probably won't like me like <laughs> wedging in an exhibit in there uh, for them. But uh, yeah, they, I mean, maybe I'll just challenge everybody to do it. Right. Um, this is not a coat. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Amy says when someone cuts it up and finds the notes, they can think they they would think quilters were somehow seeing the future like magic. That's true. We are. Cc nest Okay, well I can't I can't speak French. Um, oh my God, Holmes, or lean into it and make quilting the pattern piece lines. Dude, 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 you yes, Holmes, do that. Quilt your quilt with. Oh, I'm, I got chills with the pattern pieces, the pattern pieces, the lines. Oh my God, that's so good. Ah, that's so yes, yes, a thousand times yes. Brilliant. Okay, no, yeah, we're going to keep it just for the nerds. So demented, say no more. This is our, our thing. It is true. It is our thing. It's our thing. It's all our thing. We're in a bubble. We're in our little, we're in our, it's like, it's like the, uh, you know, the Bloomsbury group or the, um, uh, Dorothy Parker and the vicious circle. Wait a minute. Yeah. You know, we're, we're like a school, you know, like we're, we're like an art movement. We're like the neo, you're the, the futurists, right? The nerds, we're the nerds and we create these wonderful things. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe as we haven't talked about that, how maybe the clothing industry is mad at quilters for recycling clothing into quilts. So they're getting revenge by making quilts into clothes. It could be, it's, it's a problem. Oh, oh my God, I almost forgot. So this, this is the dinner party by Judy Chicago, the famous dinner party uh, piece, right? And <laughs> yes, we now have two amazing projects to work on. So this dinner party, oh, what, what year was dinner party? I didn't put that file name uh, into very good order, but the dinner party was right around this time that the artist in the quilt project was happening where quilters were copying paintings. You know, the dinner party, famous uh, Judy Chicago work where, you know, um, I would say famous women, but, but just, you know, sort of elemental women, Sojourner Truth, um, I think um, uh, Emily Dickinson or something. She set a plate for all of these women at this enormous table. <clears throat> and gave them, you know, yeah, and made a quilt, you see. So they all have uh, a specific seat at the table. And I don't know that all of the the, the seatings um, were quilts. Um, but, you know, a lot of them were quilted. Sojourner Truth's border there is definitely pieced and, uh, and you know, embroidered and things like that. I've got another picture of the full work. Yeah, um, obviously a feminist piece you can say uh it's pretty fair to say this is a work of feminist art um but it's mammoth and it's um you know it's legendary and all this and so so this is the kind of art that was taking place at the time that the artist and the quote was going on and so it's just really interesting to put that that project in perspective when you're looking at art quilts at the time the art world at the time uh it's just a fascinating thing it's a fascinating thing to think about what quilts are and where they fit in the art world and, and to me like most of us said 1979 thank you dinner party um 
like most of us were kind of feeling is like the artist in the quilt did not do what they wanted it to do. Um, if anything, it, it, it just did the opposite thing or it, or it, it just added a strange element to the conversation. And what's, what's weird so often, you know, it's like it was women who did it. Um, and they were maybe hoping to transcend some like, you know, cages that they had been put into, um, in the male dominated art world, you know, but, but in fact, I don't, I don't know that they succeeded, but again, amazing that they did it. It's never been done before or since, and it is extremely successful there. That's the last picture there. It's extremely successful because it's so confounding. <laughs> it's like, ah, what does it mean? I mean, several of you were like, I don't know how to feel about this. Uh, and that's, that's why it's important, right? Cause like what, was wrong with that project and what did they do right I don't know okay so this this is what I want to do next hang on um <laughs> that was a little history I had pulled up of art quilts but yeah I just I just I don't know I love the art quilts man and I didn't for a long time you know the thing you don't like you know ends up being your favorite thing it's like the 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 boy you didn't like at school, you're just like, ah, he's gross. And then that's the one you have a crush on, you know, later or, um, or like you hate spinach. And then later you're like, what was I thinking? It's my favorite food. Well, art quilts in the eighties. Like I was like, no, <laughs> that changed. That changed modern quilts. 2009. When was the first quilt con? Um, the first quilt con quilt con 2013 it wasn't until like 2013 so things had changed by 2013 not a ton not as much as they've changed now uh since now but but let's take a look at some early early modern ah, here we go okay i'm just just basic google image search here uh we're gonna get a lot of things that aren't what i'm looking for but i'm looking for this you know and this is not this is not bad this is, there's nothing, there's no judgment here. I'm saying these are early modern quilts and they, look, that is some Amy Butler, <laughs> Amy Butler fabric. I see it. I had it. Look at that polka dot. Yes. Or no, no, maybe that's Kay Facet. No, no, that's Amy Butler. Look at that dot. Would you look at that dot? We all had that dot. I mean, if you made modern quilts, you certainly did. You probably still do have it. No, I don't want to do that. Um, look at the quilt uh, just below. No. Sometimes with the zoom, I fail, you know, I know it. Look at this. <sighs> that's now that who knows, maybe that's a new quilt. But to me, that says early modern <laughs> cute coat quilt. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Sue says it's hard to, I know what you're saying. It's the famous quote from the, that trial about pornography, right? It's hard to define, but you know, I know it when I see it. It's hard to define an early modern quote, but you know it when you see it. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. What would be, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that, strippies. Lots of jelly rolls. Oh yes, the jelly rolls and the charm packs. <laughs> Look at this. Yes, all that negative. Oh, here, right here. All that negative space. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're in the biz. <laughs> and it's, it is dated. It's totally dated at this point. I mean, if it was 2008, well, that's not that long ago, but modern quilts have really changed. They've really changed. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, Susan, that's good. That's very good. Hmm. That's great. Yeah. Put that, put that link in the chat for sure about the, the article from the New York times. It's great. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so, so things, things change. They go, they go along. They, this is a great book, by the way, if you don't have this book, um, this is a great book. It's really, they did an amazing job. Rianne Minardi, Elisa Hay, Car Elisa Hay Carlton and Heather Grant. It's really a, f a fine book. Everyone, every quilter should have it on their, um, on their shelf. This one's, this one's a pretty big deal too. Cherry House. 
you know that was an early one that was an early one that that really kind of set set a um, an aesthetic um obviously denise schmidt's work was just huge um but you know you know weeks ringle and bill kerr do i have that right right mm -hmm. modern quilt studio um i mean these they were doing stuff before the moderns were right um let's look at oh and they, and they make okay check this out so so weeks ringle and bill kerr i believe they live in oak park illinois yep which is just just outside chicago um hang on i want to show you so you can order so they have these different god my this is really bright my monitor is like um oh no that's that's fabric you can order a quilt from like their catalog of quilts i believe sorry um and they will make they will make it what's new what where hmm hmm maybe this isn't what i want to show you i'll just pull up some of the quilts because i thought at one point you they had a certain like you know, they had a number of quilts that they had designed and you could order one of them, right? And then they would make that one for you. If I am incorrect, I'm not surprised. I'm incorrect a lot, but I feel like that was part of part of the deal. Um, yeah, they had really, really cool, cool stuff. And they were ahead of the, the modern, the modern quilters, the modern quilt guild, right? Um, yeah, quilts made modern, the modern quilt studio. Um, yeah, this was this was one I think you could you could order from their from their website, I think. Anyway, so husband and wife team, I think. But again, I'm speculating. They may not be husband and wife, but they work together and I think they live together, so so they are they are a team at any rate. So Weeks Ringle, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, Modern Quilt Studio, Dee Marie. It's been around a long time. So dated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, 1999. Okay, Modern Quilt Studio, Weeks, Ringle, and Bill Kerr have been doing their thing since 1999. Earlier designs, yes. Okay, good, Dee Marie. thank you, thank you. Elizabeth Brandt is a cool art quilter, good. Yeah, all of these, all of these tips should go into the Discord. Okay, so speaking of the Discord, let's do, let's do this. If you haven't um, subscribed, I think you should subscribe because uh it's 4.99 a month and um i'm getting really good at this because i'm like giving an ad <laughs> or like a little plug while the discord loads that's pretty good that was very natural that that happened i think that's a good sign um yeah 4.99 and uh, uh you can uh use your amazon prime subscription if you're an amazon prime member you get a free twitch subscription every month so nice of them. It's nice of them. And what other Twitch? What other show are you watching on Twitch? Just this one, right? Well, you should use your Amazon Prime uh, free subscription to subscribe to this show. Um, I'm sure it is findable in the uh, Amazon Prime, you know, account. Blah 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 stuff. You're on your own for that, but yeah. Okay, quilt nerd. So I'm gonna put an invite link uh, in the chat right now that you can, if you click on it, this is an invitation to the Discord. Um, and if you're not part of this, you should, you should be part of it. Um, because this is like our little clubhouse. It's where we hang out, uh, when the show isn't on. Um, what's cool about this show is that it's a dialogue. Obviously I love to read what you all have to say. I love, you know, I'm sure I miss things as I go along. I'm sorry. It's definitely not personal. It's just me <laughs> being human being, um, and doing five things, but, um, yeah, you can talk to me and we can talk to each other, but you can't like show a picture of a thing that you're working on or, you know, you can put a, a link, but it's gone after the show ends pretty much, you know? So in the discord, we can do, we can do all those things. We can share pictures and chat about things and projects, which is what we're getting to next. Um, and so, yeah, you should join the discord and there's different channels there, basically just different categories that helps, helps the different conversations be searchable and keeps things kind of more organized. 
And one of the sh one of the uh, channels we have is um, a channel for our this group quilt project. Have I made the channel yet? No, I haven't. I haven't even made the channel. No, I have made the channel. Okay, so here's our Discord. Oh, great, 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 great. Okay, so, you know, if you're new here, the lobby is where we say hi. Just like, hey, I'm here, what's up? We talk about stuff, you know, the sort of general. I need to catch up on my Discord. This is, you know, something on my list of things to do at least every two days. Um, and making, this is where we show pictures of what we make. And sometimes, oh, Karen's Quilt Circle. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, see, look at this. Someone's making something brilliant and beautiful. And that's, is it a Christmas quilt? It is, it's a Christmas quilt. So we have to um, we have to share what we're doing. This is amazing. You can share your, what you're working on. Newswire, put in some, some stuff, exhibits, uh, Quilts in the news, all that stuff. Eye candy, inspiration, episode discussion. That's where we just share about the show, all kinds of things. Explore it. And the Quilt Nerd Quilt is where we talk about this quilt that we're going to make. Spoiler, what does that mean? Oh, no. Spo oh, wow. You can, like, put a thing over your picture. If you don't, if you can put a spoiler alert thing over a picture. So if you don't want to look at it, you don't. Wow. Uh, cool. I have to click on it. I can't not click on it. So what I just want to figure out tonight, and remember, I just work here. <laughs> Mary Ann should be, Mary Ann ought to be involved in this project as a project manager. But if we could just agree on one thing tonight, and some of you, and we may have already agreed upon it, there may be a consensus that I am not aware of yet. What is the dimensions? What is the dimension of our blocks? What are the dimensions? How large are our blocks? Because if you don't know, we're making a quilt. That's all we know so far. And it's going to be pictorial. And it is going to have the theme of quilt nerd. I mean, it's the quilt nerd quilt. And watch that past episode about pictorial quilts. You'll totally see what we're going for here. Um, it's totally creative. Applique. Applique. You can use pieced elements in it. But your block uses applique. Because I want you to express yourself through shapes. So what, um, okay, yeah, I can, okay, I gotta show it. <gasps> ah! Oh my God. Oh, a little dress. Mm. <laughs> arm, oh God, oh, I'm dead, oh, I'm dead. Look, arm. That makes me so, like, it makes me feel really, that makes my heart feel so, so good. You know, creating, and you're cutting things out, and you know. Ah, oh, we're gonna make this quilt, y'all. We're gonna do it. Oh, I know. I love everything. Everything's perfect, y'all. Every everyone's perfect. Oh, Yvonne says I've never been part of a group quilt. You've never been so excited about a group quilt. I mean, I've never even done a group quilt. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, Yvonne. Oh, you have a st you have a, a Statler stitcher. Is that right? Hmm. Interesting. Well, quilt tops by Yvonne. Maybe you're gonna. You might be tapped to do the quilting on our quilt. Not putting you, not, don't, don't, you don't, I don't want to put you in a hard spot. You don't have to say anything, but you did volunteer that information. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So yeah. So what do you think all, okay. What do you think about dimensions? So at least we can start sketching. A lot of you have started sketching, which is amazing and so cool. And I, and so, so, so I'd say two things. What's, what's the block? Uh, uh, finished size. Well, yeah. Okay. Just figure that out. And then are we sharing what we're working on? I think totally. I think we are sharing on this channel what we're working on, right? I mean, that's part of the fun, isn't it? I mean, being secretive. To, I suppose that there is a, a world in which a secretive group quilt could be fun. Yeah, like a mystery quilt kind of thing. But I don't think that's, I don't think that's what we're going for, right? Um, all right. So Marianne. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, hold on. Wash the whole, yes, mm hmm I wash my quilts, yes, I do too. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a pre-washer. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, so with the pre-wash thing, I don't know if this is what the conversation is, but, you know, this quilt will be hung. It will it will be like one of the bicentennial quilts or, you know, does this make it an art quilt because it's going to be made for the wall and not for the bed? Maybe, yes. It's not going to have lots of 
you know, complicated, you know, it's not going to be like star shaped, a star shaped art quilt, like uh, our friends made back in the 80s. But, you know, sometimes with a group quilt, I know you have to decide if you're going to pre-wash fabric or not, because, you know, if you wash it, eventually the pre-shrunk fabric will not shrink and the non pre-shrunk fabric will shrink and you have like problems with the quilt but this quilt will will should stay dry I think for the length of its life so if that helps at all with that um um mm -mm -hmm. divisible by two okay interesting so the other Marianne said the block size in terms of the block size, divisible by two so finishing at two four eight or twelve hey metro penguin I'm so glad you're following. You are in for a treat. You're coming along on a quilt nerd adventure. You'll see. Just stick around. You'll see. Um, and thank you for following. So, wait. Oh, Holmes. Can can I tell who it is from a stream? It'll hit me after I stop the stream, of course. I have to think about it. I have to think about it. I'm sure I'll get it. Um, the bigger, the better. Oh, patchwork girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, Philly president, maybe already volunteered to machine quilt. Interesting. Interesting. Love it. Okay, good. <laughs> um, seven or eight inches. I mean, I'm thinking that, yeah, not too small for us grandmas, not too small for applique too, right? Because if you're going to make like a little face with glasses, you know, God help you, you get much smaller than like 10 by 10, you know, I would want to have a canvas that would give me enough space to like really play around with like, I mean, what if I want a sun and little birds flying and, you know, flowers and grass, like I got to have a little bit of room to use, you know? Hey, first time chat, Metro Penguin. I'm so glad you're, that, that's so great. That's so great. You're a follower and you're first time in the chat. And you are um, elected to project manage our group quilt. Congratulations. We decided that the next person to follow was going to get that wonderful job. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, new Elizabeth was thinking the finished size of eight by eight. Okay. Yep. Big enough for some creativity, but we'll keep the overall size manageable. I'll just say right now that is sounding really good to me. I have to say that is sounding really good to me. Art quilts are quilts. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, SJ. Eight by eight, hundred percent cotton. I'm feeling this two inches in Budapest. Okay, five inches or six inches would be good. Okay, how many people are going to join and possibly have to make two quilts if there are a lot of people in too many blocks? I agree, there may be two quilts, you know, and that's great. Maybe there's three. I mean, we do have to cut it off at some point, right? Because the thing is, is if it was just us here and like the main crew of like, you know, I don't know, the 40 of us or like 30 of us or whatever, you know, who are really kind of the, the OG nerds, that's fine. But then you have to think this is on replay and stuff, you know? So all the folks in the replay who are seeing it for the first time are like, I want to do this. And then it's like, oh God, that's why mom should be in charge of this. But like, do, do, how do, you see, we're not going to figure it all out tonight maybe, but, but for now, cause some, we are, We'll figure this out about, you know, how many and when, when should the blocks be due and it takes a lot of, a lot of little details, but it's also just making a quilt. So it's not, it's not too crazy. It, it, it feels overwhelming though. When I think about like how many people will want to participate, oh God, you know, um, but I am with you with eight by eight sounds good to me, five or six, mm-hmm. Five or six seems a little small, like five by five or six by six. Um, shenanigans. You call shenanigans. Um, Patchwork Girl of Oz. Love it. Uh, eight by eight. M. Sue John also likes eight by eight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm Great. Love this collab. collab. Yeah, Marianne, we've got at least two continents involved, so two quilts. Yep. 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 Make sure the block can be squared up after with a standard square ruler. Yep, there's a 9.9 and a half square ruler, so the block should have a little extra. Okay, are we using one applique technique? Here's what I would say. No, use any applique technique you like. Um, and I think that 
I mean, eight by eight is getting a little energy. I think nine, yeah, I think nine and a half is a little big, Susan. I'm feeling you. I'm, I get it. Like I'm, I see you. I see you. But I think eight by eight finished is enough of a canvas for people to make their patchwork girl and I just love it. But it will, the quilt will not, you know, if there's 20, there's 20 blocks, you know, it's like, okay. And each person making one block, um, that feels right to me. Are you feeling that? Yeah. Just as an example, totally Susan. And I'm sure. Yeah. So if it's, so if it's eight and a half by eight and a half, your little fabric piece and make it a little bigger. Yeah. So we square up or, you know, can have that wiggle room. If you're working on an eight and a half by eight and a half square so that it will finish eight inches square. What do you think? Put a, here we go. Put a one in the chat. If you think that sounds good to you and put a two in the chat. If you have a, um, what is it? a major objection? If there is a major objection, because it might be like, oh, I want more room or like, oh, that's too big. This quilt's going to be huge. Like, you know, if you have a major objection, like that is not okay because eight by eight squares are, they're just, they're just dirty is what they are. <laughs> okay. One. Yeah. Yeah. We got ones. We got ones. Okay. That's it. That's it. So eight and a half by eight and a half to get an eight by eight inch finished applique square. And that's, we did it. Oh, we did it. Okay. So one step at a time that we, that we have our, we have our, our, our um, dimensions. So next time <laughs> on well, tomorrow, Hey, listen, we can talk about it more tomorrow. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. It's easy. Sewing tomorrow at 4 PM central, we can stitch, we can work out some stuff on the back of a napkin kind of thing and figure out how to contain, how to contain the thing. Of course, if it, if people want to make their own quilt nerd quilt, you know, or just their own applique quilt, that's kind of the idea. Well, the idea is to mark this wonderful time in my life. I don't know if you feel if it's a wonderful time in your life, but like this Twitch thing has been like just such a joy. So making a quilt seems like really awesome. Um, but also I just want people to be excited about applique, you know, cause it's just, it's just people don't do it as much as they used to. And it's so good. And it's freeing. I think it's just, we're breaking out. Okay, cool. Um, I'll use, Oh, should we all use the same background color? That is such an important thing. That's such an important question. Okay. Let me pull up a picture. I need to pull up a picture because what I'm thinking, I want to look at two quilts back to back. Okay. I want to look at like a bicentennial quilt or whatever that had a white background for all of the blocks. Okay. And, but then I also want to look at that picture. You remember in the episode I showed you of, um, that the woman in quilt folk, she was in the Utah edition. I'm pulling up this picture right now that, um, she made the quilt, the feminist histories quilt with her class. Right. And I think it was all multicolored and it was all completely just do what you want, do whatever you want. Let's see how we like that. Cause it's a great quilt, but like, let's see if that's the way we want to go here. Cause that is really like a fundamental thing. We need the dimension and what, what design way are we going here? Okay. Hang on portraits. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Here. Is there, cause this is kind of, if you're just tuning in, this is kind of, kind of like kind of what we're talking about making here, you know, it's just this very individual, every person with their block kind of deal. And these are pretty big. I mean, they're obviously much bigger than eight by eight. And I think they're, you know, we need smaller. I think we should definitely go smaller. Um, but, but this is just kind of do whatever you want. Right. And then the thing is, and it'll all be, it'll all have a, um, it'll have sashing that'll all be the same like so many of these pictorial quilts that are done as a group. So there will be a cohesive element to it and we'll pick what that sashing fabric should be. You know, uh, red is usually a really good choice. So I think we should have whatever. 
Are you saying, who's saying Cheetos? Who's saying Cheetos in the chat? Who's saying Cheetos? Cheeto dust. It started with SJ, doesn't it always? <laughs> um, okay, yes. Should we all use, okay, Yvonne says, how many people are part of the that really has to be, should be decided? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't think it, I think it should be whatever you want, y'all. Cheeto dust, I mean, you people. Oh, don't you just want to sew together? Wouldn't that be great? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, do what you will. Cheetos. There's going to be a Cheeto now in this quilt. I hope. I mean, not a real one. <laughs> Chips, yes, exactly. I need I need sponsorship. Okay. Um, <laughs> sashing will make it quite a bit bigger. It's true. It is true. Yeah, that is true. But I think, I think if we go any smaller than eight finished, it just won't be as fun. Because I mean, I tried to sew an eyeball onto like a little figure, you know, and it was like, mm, that's not going to work. So embroidery, use embroidery, you know, if you need to make little dots on a, if you need to make little Cheeto dust dots, you know, maybe try a little French knot or something like that, you know, that'd be cool. Yvonne says, even if we all pick one color for a background, you're purchasing it from different parts of the world. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's do as you will. Marianne is eating Cheetos with chopsticks. <sighs> it's after midnight, Marianne. <laughs> I don't know what that matters. That's amazing. Really? Chopsticks? That's so great. Oh, you guys. Okay. Um, it, oh, Cheetos. God. Yep. Oh, <laughs> or stick a toothpick in an Oreo for easier milk dipping. You people, it's time to just wrap it up. I love you. I love hanging out with you. It's so much fun. Um, interesting night, right? We talked about that quilt at the Jewish Museum. So beautiful and just heartwarming and touching and lovely. And we talked about the artist in the quilt. That strange project that took eight years to finish but eventually was finished. <sighs> Fascinating. And then we looked at art quilts from the eighties. And then we looked at a few early modern quilts that are now like of an era. And then we talked about the project. I'd say it was a pretty successful show. I, I mean, it's yes. Yes. We got a good group. <laughs> Oreos. A toothpick cannot handle the weight the beautiful weight of an Oreo. Marie, Dee Marie, explain yourself. How big is this toothpick? Or are you eating mini Oreos? If you're eating the mini Oreos, what's wrong with you? And if you're not a toothpick, that must be a pretty good toothpick. All right, yes, good to see you all. Yeah, great time as always, I agree. Um, take care, everybody. I'll put the notes uh, for the show in the stream or in the Discord. And you got work done on a table running. Okay, y'all. Okay, you're the best. See you at Discord. Bye, Crosley. Hey, okay. See you later. Bye.